Good morning. Uh, <laughs> I I kind of missed uh, doing my videos. I hope you missed me as much as I missed doing them. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been a little bit isolated, and so this is actually, you know, hearing back from comments about the videos and having phone calls, and and um, and it's not just DNA people. It's it's a lot of people that I know and are interested in, you know, some of the information that I'm I have to give, and some of it's very simple um, to do. Some of the families are just Bing, 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 and they got married, they had a couple kids, they retired, and and then they passed. Uh, I haven't found too many of those though in the families that I've been researching, and. Um, Every day something new comes up uh, in regards to things that I might not even, you know, sometimes I think I have an analysis that, that I see a pattern. So I'm always looking for patterns, you know, and, and overall, this is the family that had the pattern of everybody kind of going with each other when they would make the moves. Now, some of them didn't, you know, they had other reasons. Um, so Sarah Josephine Allnut, um, is the one I have been working on. And she had two husbands. She married um, um, his name. The his name was Thomas uh, Shelton. She married him in Seattle, and I have not made any connection of why for sure Seattle and why they were out there. Um, her life basically was around uh, Hamilton, uh, Montana. And where I visited, and in in they brand um, like grocery stores. Very very small town. Even now, you know, there's there's no big big towns, but they that's kind of what they did. And so I and it, and I thought it was interesting because um, the other man she was married to, his last name was Stockman, and his sons, <laughs> one was Dean, that went to Los Angeles. One went, Harry went to Spokane. And Eloise went to uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Now, I haven't figured out the connection, you know, as far as that goes. But but I do see, you know, and, and part of it when I com I, I do complain a little bit about the heirs. And, and over time, you'll kind of understand um, why that is. But like when I said Dean Stockman, Dean, Dean was his, probably more of his um, social name. His, his actual name was... Uh, Maldine, Maldine on his official papers. So, you know, it took me a while to, to make sure that was straightened out in my mind. And when you're looking for just Dean, you know, you, I, I go through a lot of records that are handwritten and that's something else that creates it. It's, it's not just people being, um, you know, bad at their job as much as I think some people back then had a, a tendency to be kind of like more flowery with the way they wrote. And so sometimes when that's interpreted, I, I might get it out of some records that are actually translated into to, um, print. And then I question it, I go back to the original and it's like, oh, uh-huh, that makes sense to me. That that person not knowing what they were looking for in this flowery arrangement of letters, they... You know, as soon as I looked at it, I could see the name. So Whitaker was one of the names that that wasn't <laughs> didn't make sense the way it was um, passed on into like a a printed document. When I went into the census and looked and looked at the swirls and uh, everything, um, it was very obvious to me it, it was Whitaker, and I knew the name was involved somewhere. So you get you get these little hints along the way, and and which which are very helpful. So um, I think the other thing that I, I do when, and, and it's probably just anybody does as far as when you're researching, oh, excuse me, researching, have the tendency to go, um, you know, I do on quite a bit on paper. That's why I've had so many papers over the years is, you know, I would copy them and, and, um, and then scribble, make scribble notes and, and, you know, as I'm trying to untangle <laughs> the uh, mess, and so this this one was it, it you know and it's not over. I think I thought oh I I can't do another video until it's all over, but 
uh, yeah, no, that's not going to happen because it might not happen for a while. It will happen eventually. I have, you know, there's there's so many people, more people adding um, their DNA, getting their DNA tested and being available. And one of the things that I really wanted to, to kind of talk through about is um, Ancestry.com, they periodically change the format of their works, which is good and which is bad and sometimes but it's a it's an adjustment and i know that when it happened and they created this thing called through lines um my brother and i you know we we kind of had to do a lot of talking about it trying to figure out well how how what are they trying to convey to us what is it that that's going to give us a better um idea of how to get through some of the the situations we get in so I'm going to explain this, you know, verbally. Um, I'm going to be looking at what I see. And if anybody is at any point, I mean, I welcome any kind of contact or questions or help or any ideas of, of that you may have. And, and the ideas that are coming in um, have been really, really valid and not, not necessarily on my front page of what I'm doing. And so, you know, it's something else to look for. So I'm going to kind of be talking about what I'm seeing on my other, on my monitor. So there at the top of the list on the monitor is John Johnson on the, so he's the father of these 11 kids. Now, what I'm looking at right now is I see a Lillian, I see Sarah J, which is the one I've been working on. And then I see Roy will be my grandfather so if you from my grandfather then you come down and they they made it so that you could look at the dna matches as it comes down so the first match under roy for me is patricia jean um Allnett, which was my mother and then there then there's a split in this um diagram and there's one, I go one way and it says Marsha McDonald. And then my brother goes, uh, he's there and it says Dan McDonald. And then off of mine, it says Marsha McDonald. Then it shows the D DNA match to Donald Johnstone, which is DJ, um, my son. So, you know, we've been using this now for years and, it, and it's very helpful as people add more to it. Now, the Sarah J, the one that I've been working on for several days. Oh, sometimes I, I, I'm embarrassed to say just how much I do love doing this and how much I spend on the challenge of it. But anyway, so Sarah's at the top of the list next to John Wilby or to Roy because they're brother and sister. And then her line goes down and you click and it, it kind of un, unravels down. And the first person that comes up after Sarah J, uh, J is um, Eloise May Stockman. So he, here she is. Okay, so we went from the all nut, so I know that the all nut married a Stockman. And then from there, in that marriage, that marriage produced another child that was a DNA match um, which would be a second cousin, and her name is Sharon Templeton. And and then there's a little line that they give us and says, you know, the ones you need to reevaluate, uh, re <laughs> uh, do some more work on it is what I'm trying to say. And so then, then it's interesting though, because then it goes from Sharon Templeton down and it says private. And as I've mentioned before, private is when the person is still alive. So that tells me there's a person out there that's alive that is a DNA match to us and it's going down closer down into the area where our ages are. So, but it doesn't give us any name. So then the next one jumps down and this is the one that's like really kind of intriguing to me and I spend quite often um, using this is that it goes down and it's, it says A-R, and it's Alexandria Rebar. Never heard of the name Rebar until just the last few days. Uh, Alexandria, I have not had any anybody even with that name. It says second cousin two times removed. And then it tells me how many uh, Cinnamorgans 
uh, in the DNA link that uh, in the four segments that they looked at in, in 69. So my brother, brother, my brother's um, symptom organs related to me in the DNA scenario is 2,536. So that's a very close. Now, when DJ went ahead and did his, his is 3,400 and 33 segments. So obviously he's, he's, you know, higher in the level. So you'll see that as, as it comes down, it changes and it gets smaller a lot of times. Now, what was interesting is, is so, you know, this is, this is one of my scratch, scratchy pads. And I even color code it sometimes because I, you know, you, you get especially two two families going at the same time with the same with the same mother, but two husbands. And so I make all these notations. And what I found was this Alexandria. I think it was yesterday I noticed, and it says new. So it says somebody out there by that name is working. And there's a little symbol that says it's definitely a DNA match to our family. So I can then, and I did, I can click on that AR and get her information and I can actually send her a message. So part of this is very helpful. There's, there's some pitfalls to it, but, you know, generally speaking, I think it's something really good that Ancestry came up with. Um, and then it will show her family tree and her family tree then kind of conveys where Sharon Templeton fits in and Eloise fits in. And then I can compare it to what, what I've been working on. And, and that's not, that's not like a simple, a simple uh, matter because it's basically going through and, and, and working their genealogy family trees and to, to check, to make sure that there's the resources they have in the documents that they're putting out there. And um, there is a lot of discrepancies. And so uh, and I try to be very, very careful with not copying anybody else. You can copy some somebody else's work into your tree, but you know, that might not be correct. And then you're, you can get really messed up. So um, I've sent her a, a message now and I just said, hi, this is, you know, this is my name and I, and I'm working on a project where I'm doing videos to, to make our ancestors more alive and more real and fitting that into all the data and the record keeping that we have so we can see both and that it kind of makes the people come alive. And then I invite her and I invited her to um, review my videos. I gave her, you know, how to find the videos so she could um, look at them. And then also she, I, you know, I gave her full, full privilege to look at my tree. Now people can look at other people's trees, but they can't just copy the whole thing over. You, you know, you kind of have to pick and choose the information off, but a lot of times there's good hints on there and you can, you can get a better idea of where that person might be stuck. And, and then if they're in the stuck in the same place, then it gives you and um, the other person working on this. And there's thousands of people out there right now that I can play this game with. And part of it, um, one statistic I, I heard fairly recently, I think it's been since I've been doing my videos, is that you can contact DNA people through Ancestry.com. And if you do about 20, you may hear from one. And why that is, um, which I understand totally, is that, you know, you... <laughs> You, you know, it's like any ho hobby or anything you're enjoying or anything you're doing, you know, there might be something else come up that you got diverted. And so you might not look at your ancestry.com information for days, weeks, month. Um, I know that sometimes people wait to do it during the winter when, when they can't be outside, like gardening or raising their animals, they, they sit, sit and do genealogy, um, it, yeah, it's, it's just a it's spur of the moment. So that, I, I really don't know. I mean, it's kind of like, I look at it like fishing. And, you know, I grew up on the Pacific Northwest. And so there's a lot of um, correlation for me when, you know, back what I remember, especially about fishing. So you put the, you know, you you take your hook, and you put your bait on it and you throw it out there. Now you just have to wait and see if the fish actually thinks the bait is pretty enough or more interesting enough and bites it. And so I do find a lot of people, um, especially people who are fearful 
that either somebody's going to criticize their their expertise and so they lock theirs down um i have found there's other people the one that comes to mind the most and is probably a little later we'll probably have i'll do a whole video on her but i ran across a lady who um didn't know where her dad was her mother had died she was raised by an aunt or other relatives and so she was kind of and she didn't know how to do genealogy either but she was smart enough to 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 put it out there so she basically uh sits there i mean i, I you know she's not working on her or you know she has no no information like documented um that you could go to and and use her information but you you know my brother and i both took a look at it and what she was saying that got us was that she was first cousins to us. And we knew that that wasn't possible. Well, it could have been possible, but you know, both our moms and dad was only children. And um, so there's there's that, so there's people out there, but I'm more, right now I'm kind of more interested in, in people who are doing genealogy on a regular basis and and comparing notes and, and pictures, pictures and other stories. Because I know when I started doing this about the stories, I was amazed at, at how much detail I was able, you know, there's the detail you, you'd get with the dates and the census reports and the obituaries and that, you know, you get a lot of data on a person, but when you get the story a little bit better in your mind, as far as why this person up and moved, why did they um, go all together to someplace else, you know, there's there's generalizations, but there's also, you know, some really detailed information that um, you you can glean from just the data and the stories. And so being me, <laughs> I, you know, I really like to be able to, you know, go a little bit further with it and, and actually make contact with somebody that's a DNA match. Um, I, I have I have something that I've been working on for quite a while and I was very, very excited about. And then I realized that the person that was the DNA match had a couple of kids, but but they died. And so there was no one to carry on that that part of the family. So, you know, sometimes I have to look at, you know, and I personally I'm interested in it all, but this is a good place to start is to do um, you know, what I'm doing with the the videos and and using uh, ancestry.com to do it so um i got the two husbands and it, it today this morning i was working on it you know because i really wanted to do a biz video but i think sometimes i think of the videos as like like it's my job and i have to finish it all and 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 this is just for fun and um and and it's for connections and communications and um you know and i really i really would like to remind everybody that there's multiple places that you can leave contacts uh to me i've had you know one contact like it showed up three different places it showed up on my actual email and then it showed up in ancestry and then it showed up in a excuse me a site that i created um for people to give information so if you take that the time and look around and see if you can find places for comments i'd really appreciate that and and um do subscribe that helps my ribbon boy <laughs> today is like no i have i i am tired but not that tired <laughs> um it, it's funny i've become much more conscious of when when i'm doing the videos and so there's um there's a couple that I watch all the time and some of the like coughing, you know, is it's, it's, it's just human. <laughs> so, but I think it should be all perfect. Uh, let's see. So, so I'm going to continue on this family mainly because there were some locations in Montana that the, the younger husband had went to in Meanderville and Silver Bow. And I believe they're mines. And um, I've been kind of like interested. This has been some tips that have come in to me about um, mercury poisoning. Um, maybe I, 
geez, allergies have been really, really bad here in Denver. And we had we had a warning um, a couple of nights ago and my grandson was with me and my phone went off into alarm and it said, that, yeah, please go indoors, take your animals indoors, get away from your glass windows. We're expecting um, baseball size hail. Now, it didn't hit here. The tornado actually hit another place in Denver, but it caused a lot of damage and it's stuff like that. So it was like it all fits together. And he's he, he's so excited about me having a um, uh, YouTube channel too, which, which is really cute. And um, it, I have one that I watch all the time that they're building a house. And I have uh, one that is... Um, it's uh, the lawyer you know, and I've learned so much about legality and the laws. And I'm gonna um, one of the next videos, which will be coming up pretty soon, sooner than this one. I'm has taken me, but you know, to get this one out. But it's a, it's concerning um, uh, crime, cold cases, and crime, and I'm very interested in that too, and using DNA for that. So I will. Um, Put that out for you and i think the combination of my <laughs> throat right now and i'm coming up on my <laughs> 22 minutes which is for some reason i that's how long most of my vis, uh, videos are so <laughs> thank you for being patient with my <laughs> coughing and my voice being a little raspy but i'm i'm gonna end this and get back to doing some more research <laughs> have a great day bye